As I was starting to say in the last video, this is a little technical, <clears throat> a little nerdy. You need to know really what you're looking at to know that the surfaces of these bearings are in good shape. If you've never seen the surface of a bearing, you won't know that this bearing is A, number one, huge. Today I was on the boat and they, they told us, hey, if you guys need to use the bathroom, use this stateroom. And today I saw the chief and I was like, hey, chief, we're, we're running out of toilet paper. Or we ran out of toilet paper in that bathroom. And he's like, all right, I'll get some toilet paper for you guys. And a little while later, he saw me and he was like, you know, it reminded him that he needed to grab toilet paper. But what he said was, your face makes me want to poop. <laughs> I was just busted off laughing. I was like, is that really what you said? Oh my God. We're gonna get completely lost again today. Today, yeah. Forward. Um, no, you're supposed to go right. <laughs> I'm just making shit up. Today's lesson is on installing pistons and cylinder heads. Cylinder heads. Jason right now is installing the oil control ring. You have the sp spring on the inside and then the ring on the outside. Make sure which one is top and bottom on the thing. That one is easy enough, you can slide it on by hand. The rest of the rings have to be installed with a tool. So he'll pick it up, he's looking for top. There's a specific order which they have to go in, and then also top and bottom. You cannot install them upside down. He's lining up the tool. This will spread the gap, open the ring up, and allow him to slide it down into place, release the pressure, and now we see the process I've shown you in earlier videos, the pistons and the rods just chilling on the floor as my coworkers took them apart cleaned them, measured everything, and reassembled them. And now I move them from the floor over and across, over, back and forth, back, up and down, up and down. This gives you a super good forearm workout. Randy just had something to say to me and he's got to say it right into my ear. And I'm working two chain falls at the same time, moving this piston and rod over into place while Jason is preparing the next one. And then I gotta drop this thing down. You can see the heavy side is up. It's gonna be an ugly flip right here. Happens so fast you almost don't notice. Wham! Then we get it from the chain falls to the powered crane. Now it's hooked on the powered crane. That green ring around the top of the piston means that Jason has installed all of the piston rings already and clamped them down tight. He's now just cleaning a set of piston rings for the next piston to go into place. Well, Ari down below prepared the bearing, installed it. I lower it down. This piece of cardboard we're putting in here is so that the surface of the the surface of the rod does not scratch the liner. And then you get it down slowly into place. We're watching the top. Ari is down below getting that rod lined up onto the crankshaft. We get everything settled. The piston compressor comes off. 
And now it is fully into place. Ari's double checking everything. We can finally release. Time to move on to the next one and repeat the process for every cylinder. Okay, now we've done all those. We're doing the cylinder heads now. Got the jack set up. I'm getting the jacks tightened. Got the camera set up. <laughs> what in the. <laughs> Jason! Jason! What are you doing? <laughs> I was filming. <laughs> Obviously, you can see what I'm paying attention to. I have not seen this footage. <laughs> Uh, okay, we had just finished tightening that head. We're moving the jacks over to the next cylinder head. S move them over, tighten them down. You grab the hydraulic line from the hy the jack there, and then you bottom the jack out. The jack won't bottom out until you have the line plugged in. That fluid needs somewhere to go. Now the fluid is able to go back into the reservoir of the jack, bottom it all the way out. When you're tightening it, you don't want it to be up at all. You want it to be all the way bottomed when you tighten it so that that jack can expand as far as it needs to. Just lean on that snap-on ratchet as much as you can. Get that bitch tightened. There you go. They're all tightened. You can see the main pump is hooked up already. And now we're clicking the daisy chain lines in. The reason why this pump takes so long is because it pumps up the first jack into the second jack, into the third jack, into the fourth jack. I'll show you that here soon. This footage here, everything's tightened. And you just put that bar down in there. Tighten the nuts absolutely as much as you can, all four of them. Before you release the pressure and move on to the next cylinder head 500 bar is 7250 psi give or take what we are doing is stretching that that rod that comes out of the block with 7200 pounds of force stretching it up and then tightening the nut down and let releasing the pressure and I'm showing you here in real time how long it takes for those four jacks to stretch the studs the seven seventy two fifty PSI it's absolutely ridiculous It's at 200 bar right now. There's 250 bar. If you've ever used a floor jack to lift your car up, and you know the difference between a slow floor jack and a quick jack, this is definitely a slow jack. Then again, also think about if you had to do this by hand. Because right now, I just spun that center knob that says cycling valve. And I just sit here and watch it and wait. So realistically, how much effort am I putting in? Sitting here and watching for a minute or so? Easy, easy as pie. Better than being under your car going jack, 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 you're fucking pumping your shoulders going out. Almost there, there's 450. So 
So 7,200 pounds of force have stretched that stud up and then you spin that nut as tight as you can with that little, it's nothing more than a round bar at a specific, your six to eight millimeters somewhere. I've used Allen's before if I don't have the bar. The bar is much nicer. Get them tightened all the way down as much as you can. Don't block the footage with my arm. Down. Here's the last one. Turn, 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 and down. Let's probably go back and double check them all. Make sure they're actually as far down as you can push them. Call it a day. Yell about something. Talk about the job. And call it good. Watch the line relax when I release the pressure. Yeah, there it goes. Now he starts to pull off the daisy chain hoses. And we move on to the next one. It takes the two of us most of a day to tighten both banks of cylinder heads. Just getting in a rhythm. Just trying to break that loose by hand. It's easier with the ratchet. There we go. Get it broken down. Spin them off. And move it on to the next cylinder. Okay, there's both banks of cylinder heads installed and torqued down. That's a full day's work. Looks solid.